copyrighted program created by the Rio Grande Oil Company. Sacramento Police calling all cars, attention all cars, broadcast 88. All officers not at present on duty report to headquarters to participate in a manhunt for two escaped San Quentin convicts. That's all. <laughs> Here's a telegram for you, friends. It's from San Diego, California, and it reads, quote, Congratulations. Now all San Diego County police cars, fire engines, and emergency motors are powered exclusively by Rio Grande cracked gasoline, unquote. And that's not all. Just before the San Diego telegram was received, we had official notification from the city of Bakersfield that Rio Grande cracked gasoline has been adopted for Bakersfield police cars after competitive tests with other gasoline. It was only a week or two ago you heard us announce that Phoenix, capital city of Arizona, was using Rio Grande cracked gasoline for all emergency cars, profiting from the example of Maricopa County, Arizona, which has been using Rio Grande cracked in sheriff's cars for many months. In previous broadcasts, we have read to you a long list of cities using Rio Grande cracked gasoline exclusively. An impressive list that includes Fresno, Berkeley, Oakland, and Los Angeles, which have used Rio Grande cracked gasoline exclusively for years. Rio Grande has been awarded these city contracts not because of price or politics, but because Rio Grande cracked has proven by actual tests to give greater speed, greater power, and greater mileage per gallon than uncracked gasoline. What better evidence can you ask to convince you that Rio Grande Crack is the finest gasoline you can use in your car? And now it is our privilege to introduce Chief William H. Hallinan of the Sacramento Police Department, who will speak to you from station KFBK in Sacramento. Pete Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, the Sacramento Police Department is proud to join the roster of law enforcement agencies whose work has been dramatized on calling all cars. In introducing my department to this great radio program, I would like to assure all those within the sound of my voice, who may be planning to break the law, that crime does pay. Crime pays with big dividends. Crime pays with the coins of misery, of penance, of long years behind iron bars, of poverty and disgrace. And for those who really embrace the crime to its fullest, who commit the supreme crime of murder, for them, crime has the greatest payment of all. Death on the gallows. A wriggling, grasping death for the servant of crime. Up 13 stairs and down one. Through a little trap to eternity. That is the payment of crime. Any of you who think it is worth it, I invite you to break the law. Make one false step and the police will be looking for you with a vigilance that never lags, with an alertness that never sleeps, looking for you constantly to award you the rewards of crime, which is punishment. Don't forget, don't think for a moment, the crime doesn't pay. All you who desire unhappiness, imprisonment or death, I invite you to embrace a life of crime. Our 
story tonight opens in the late summer of 1923 in the office of the superintendent of the Colorado State Reform School as two boys stand silent and uncomfortable before the superintendent's desk. Well, boys, you have paid your debts to society. You made a mistake when you thought you could break the laws. You have erased that error by the time you have served here. And I hope you have learned while you have been with us that crime does not pay. Oh, yes, indeed, sir. You've told us that many times. And I have told you so for a purpose. It is the truth. An unassailable, tremendous truth. See that you always remember it. Oh, we will, sir. Joe and I are going straight. Oh, that's fine. That's the sort of resolution I like to hear. Uh, you never regret it. There's nothing like a clear conscience. There's nothing like being able to, to look the other fellow in the eye and know that you're clean, clear through. Uh, like me, for instance. Yes, sir. Oh, don't think I haven't been faced with temptation. Oh, no, sir. Of course, uh, not the temptation to rob a house, but uh, there have been temptations. <laughs> and I met each one and conquered it like a man. Yes, sir. That's the challenge that life hurls at us, boys. Be men. Yes, sir. Well, <laughs> I could go on on that subject for hours. Yes, sir. Uh, how's that? Uh, nothing, sir. However, I believe you boys have heard me speak on the matter before. And I know you're eager to walk out into the world free again. Yes, sir. Mm, yes, I thought so. Well, here's five dollars apiece to get you started. Oh, thank you, sir. Thanks. Goodbye, boys. And remember, be men. Yes, sir. Uh, let me hear from you from time to time, but don't let me see you back here again. Oh, no, sir. We won't be back here again. That's the spirit. Hate life and be men. Uh, that, that's right, yes. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Can you imagine us having to listen to that trouble much for a half an hour to get this lousy saw bucket? Yeah, about five bucks is five bucks, and we're going to need it. I know, but it ain't hardly worth it. But like throwing it in his face. Be men. Crime don't pay. Maybe you don't pay for mugs like him, but we're going to make it pay. <laughs> I'll say. Okay, Jake. Open them gates for us. I'll pay it up, huh? That's right. Well, we'll be seeing you back pretty soon, I guess. Oh, no, you won't. Why? You ain't going straight, are you? No, we ain't going straight. We're going to California. <laughs> Picking up an old second-hand car, the two boys head west for Tanko's brother's home in South San Francisco. They make a connection with a bootlegger and manage to pay expenses by making deliveries for him. Then one day in San Bruno, California... Hey, boy, that was a boulevard stop you just went through. Ah, oh, what of it? There's nobody out this end of the town. No traffic, no houses. Oh, yeah, that's what you think. That motorcycle cop back there is following us. No kid. Well, I'll fix him. What are you going to do with that gun? Can't let him catch us with this load of booze. Yeah, but poor in a rock. If they catch us, it ain't no reformatory this time. It's a big house. That's got him. He's Mr. Dust like a redskin. Turn around. Let's make sure I bump him off. Oh, but gee, that's what There ain't what? nobody out here. Come on, swing around. I don't care who he is. He ain't got to live to identify us. Get out your kid. What for? I'm going to make sure he's dead. Let him have it. Jesus. Go on, let him have it. Well, that ought to take care of him. Hey, Joe, here comes a car down the road. Let's get going and step on it. Francisco police pick up the wanted car abandoned on Mission Street. 
From an envelope found in the car, officers learned the address. The found in the car, officers learned the address of Tango's brother in South San Tango's brother in South San Francisco, and quickly placed the two boys under arrest. At headquarters, they are questioned in separate rooms. Now, look here, all you look like a clean-cut kid. You don't look like a liar to me. <laughs> I'm not a liar. Oh, yes, you are. You're lying when you deny shooting chief men. Uh, I don't know anything about it. Oh, come on, kid. An honest confession is good for the soul. Why don't you tell the truth? I haven't got anything to tell. Well, McNulty? There you go, just confess. That's fine. Now, you see, all you might as well confess, too, and we can save everybody's time. I don't believe Joe confessed. That is, well, well, he hasn't got anything to confess. Well, I don't know about that. He had plenty to say. And he confessed that he was busy when you shot Keith Lee. When I shot him? Sure, well, the course it's all broken up that, that his pals have gotten him into such a jam. Is that what he said? Sure. Oh, he's a dirty, double-crossing rat. All right. All right, I'll talk. I'll tell you everything. I'll fix that guy. He can't squirm out of this thing. Now nah, you're using some sand poles. Get all this down, Thompson. Yes. Well, this was great. The whole thing was Joe's idea, see? He was afraid of getting caught with a booze in the car. He winged the copper, and then he made me go back and empty him a gun in him. It was all Joe's idea, and he can't lay the blame on me. Why did you murder Chief Meehan? I didn't. Listen, Tanko, we got all we want on you. A witness took down the number of your car. When we found the car, we found your brother's address in it. Your brother's got an alibi, and you haven't. You shot Chief Meehan. You can't prove it. You'll never get me to say it. Well, McNally? Hold up, confess. Sir. What? Here's his confession with his signature at the bottom. Look for yourself. Why, that thinking squealer. If I could get my hands on him. My pal. Trying to throw the rap onto me, is he? Well, how about it, Tanko? Looks pretty bad for you from what Hall says here. Yeah? It was just as bad for him as it is for me. Okay, I did shoot that bull. But all empty his get into him, too. Go ahead and put me in the big house. And if you do, you'll put that pal of mine there with me. During the trial, when they compare notes, Tanko and Hall realize how they were duped into a confession by stratagem. All rancor disappears between the two, and they pledge themselves to assist each other to escape at the earliest possible moment. On November the 11th, 1923, they are sentenced to San Quentin for life. That afternoon on the ferry crossing the bay to the penitentiary. Listen now. Listen. Looks like you were watching them see you. Listen to this plan. Okay. Go ahead. The fog's coming in fast. We can make a break for it. Are you game? Sure. Okay. About 15 feet from here to the railing. When the sheriff's back's turned, we rush the railing. Oh, jump out as far as you can and then swim like the devil. Oh, it's a long chance, Joe. I know it is. It's better than a life in stir, ain't it? Sure. The sheriff's moving down the deck now. He's talking to someone. All set. Oh, let's go. Hey, Sheriff! You're fucking loose! Now, what is this? What do you think? Hey, you let me go. Get out of my way, you big fucker. Yeah, that'll quiet you for a while. How about you all? You want to taste this pistol butt, too? Hey, you win. Yeah, now, just what's the big idea? Oh, John, me don't want to go to the big house. Nobody does. But they don't think about it until after they've pulled that trigger. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you this. We ain't going to stay there. We'll get out. You just wait and see. Go stay with me, kid. Only I'll warn you, if you do get out, you'll go back. Well, it won't be the Quentin, it'll be the Fulton. Led to their intention of escape, Sam Cohen Hall spent 18 months in the penitentiary plotting their getaway. Finally, during the rest period on an April morning, the two meet for guarded conversation. For guarded conversation. Everything was up. I'm talking about this anymore, have you? No. Oh, boy. I thought Pete was lying. A couple of cracks in the other day. Travel faster than just the two of us. I'll do better this time. Boy! Go on. I'm shinning up there. Fast in that room so we can get down the other side. Okay. Got it fastened? Go ahead, then. Drop over. 
Hey, it's just a siren. I think the wire. Come on, we got to play. Wail of the San Quentin siren is the call to arms, which mobilizes the Rins County law enforcement officers into a huge posse. Ferries are watched. All train and bus passengers are closely scrutinized. Highways are blocked and motorists questioned. But San Cohen Hall managed to elude the dragnet. Five group a stage of searching elapsed. And then on April 12, 1925, in a clothing store in Petaluma. Good afternoon, gentlemen. What can I do? Pick him up. What? what? Please don't shoot, don't shoot. I ain't got no money. You can see for yourself I ain't taking in two dollars. We don't want no money. We want a couple of suits. You pick them up, Floyd. Okay, suits? Why should you be running suits? Have you never seen prison denim before? We're escaped. We've got to change our duds quick. Are you the two who got out of San Quentin the other day? That's right. Hey, I got a couple here that looks like a fit. Okay. I'll keep our friend here covered. Hurry up and get into your new clothes. All right. Hey, that ain't no gun you got in your hand. It's a piece of lead pipe. What's the difference? I can beat your brains out of this just as easy as I can blow them out of the gap. So don't start getting any ideas. Oh, don't hurry. I won't. Two days later, in the general store in Healdsburg. You got any revolvers here? No, no, but we got some nice rifles. Let me see them. Tal and me want to do a little rabbit shooting. Uh, yes, sir. Now, here's a very fine rifle. Yeah. That looks all right. Got any shell bust? Oh, yes, right here. Loads like this, don't it? Yes, that's right. And you slip the shells in there. That's fine. Now you can stick up your hands. Oh, hard to hold up. Okay, boys, stuff some of that grub into them sacks. You, mister, unload your cash register. I haven't much money. Now, look we'll here, take boy. Your your we're hungry and we're broke, uh, and we ain't in any humor to be argued with. I'll sell out quick. days later, Tan Cohen Hall robbed two men on the outskirts of Sacramento, and then on April 18th, they enter a second-hand store in Sacramento at a moment when no one is present but the proprietor, H.J. Litzberg, and the clerk. Yeah, hello, boys. You advancing something? Yeah. Pick them up. Yeah. Now, boys, you must be fooling. Hey, we should go that floor, Joe. No, we ain't fooling. No. Two murders that got on it. Oh, shut up, boys. Empty that register fast. <laughs> Later in the day, police find the fugitive's car abandoned in Oak Park. Reports come in from the wide area surrounding Sacramento. And Cohen Hall are said to have been seen in Placer County in Newcastle. They are reported in the Bumbago Mine Bottom. A posse bottles up the canyon, but the two fugitives managed to escape. For days, authorities comb the countryside. At Auburn, the two desperados again elude the police. Then, on May 5th, near Colfax in Placer County... You sure the mail comes through this back road? Sure. I tell you, I hid out here yesterday and watched it go by. There's a car coming now. That ought to be the mail. It's about due. It is. Come on. Stick up your hands. What do you want? Stick them up and come down out of that truck. Uh, uh, this is the U.S. mail. I don't care what it is. We're taking it over. Oh, uh, you, you fellas must be the two convicts that escaped. We are. Uh, you won't get far because the woods are full of deputies hunting for you. Oh, yeah? Put that gag on this guy, Floyd. He talks too much. Oh, oh now, listen, boys. Don't do this. I, I Shut up! Come yep. on, oh, tie it tight. <laughs> you got some of that rope? There you are. Okay. I'll just press him up good. You take his feet. There. They won't get far with those, you know. I learned them when I was a Boy Scout. <laughs> Fine Boy Scout you must have been. Yeah, he threw me out for smoking. Hey, what do you say? All the way to bump him off? No, oh, I wouldn't. There ain't no sense in having too many murders against us. What's the difference? We got two, we might as well have a lot. You can only hang once. But we ain't gonna hang. I'll say we ain't. Dollars. No use in bumping them off. Let's just shove them over this bank. He'll probably cock himself on those rocks down there and go to sleep for a while. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. oh shut up. Stop him, Floyd. Oh. There he goes, like a sack of potatoes. Okay, let's get this meal truck out of here. Here, here comes the car around the bend. It's the first one in a couple of hours. Yeah, that's the mail truck. 
Boy, I can sure get a bead on it from here with this machine gun. Yeah, but you don't want to shoot up the U.S. mail. You're looking for those two convicts. Well, still and all, if it was them two convicts, I could sure stop them in their tracks. There, there's two guys in that truck. Are you sure it ain't them? Uh, I tell you, I see these two convicts. That's the reason they swore me in as deputy. Yeah, that's the mail driver and some guys breaking in, I suppose. Well, it's sure too bad it wasn't Tanko and Hall, because I'd have had them dead to right. Now, you see, when I get the stock of this rifle sawed off and cut a spot on it for a scrap, we can carry them under our coats like a shoulder holster. You sure are smart, Joe. Sure I am. We've been ducking these posses for a month. Yeah, it was a great break finding this cabin up here in the hill. Yeah, and it was a break to find this other rifle in the cabin. Now nobody's going to stop us. What is that? Sounded like a shot. Another posse, I'll bet. Some dumb deputy shot his gun off. Come on, let's scram. <laughs> well, we ought to leave my note of thanks for warning us. <laughs> With the hills alive with posses and their pictures and descriptions plastered in every public place, Tan Cullen Hall chances for escape grow slimmer. Nevertheless, it's a couple of days before the next development when late one afternoon, Detective Captain Hallinan of Sacramento receives an excited telephone call. Detective Bureau, Hallinan speaking. This is Paul Throat. I'm arrested. My place is your own. Yeah? Those two hit-hunting just they did. Which way were they heading? They, they stole my car and they started towards Mexico. They're coming here out of the road and dragged my wife and me. Hide us to the bed and then, then they cooked themselves food and stole my car. And Thank you very much, Mr. Farrell. You stay right there and I'll send some men out to look your place over for fingerprints. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll wait right there. Robert. Go out to the ranch of Paul Farrell between here and Auburn and find out what you can about those two cons being there this afternoon. Thompson. Yeah? Take it to Taylor Men and patrol the road from Auburn. Pick up a 1922 Dodge touring car. License number 159837. And watch the step. Panko and Hall are in the car. Yes. Wait a minute. Yeah. This might be something. Detective Bureau, Hallerman speaking. Say, I just saw a guy who looked like Panko going into a theater over here. Where? Uh, it was at the Poco Theater, you know, the one run by the Japanese. Okay, thanks. Go ahead, Thompson, and look for the car. Right. Steve. Yes, sir. Go to the Toco Theater and surround the place and take down the customers. I just got to tip the tank on hauler in there watching the show. Okay. Now, look here, Mr. Kokomoto. All I want you to do is to stop the show and turn up the lights. Oh, not understanding, please. Now, we're trying to find a couple of escaped convicts, and they're in your theater. Oh, not understanding. Uh, what are escaping convicts, please? Listen. We're policemen. Oh, yes. I know a policeman. Very fine fellow. Well, oh, come on. Turn up the lights. Oh, customer, not liking lights. Come on. Listen, uh, we ain't got time to wait. You turn up the lights or I'll arrest you. Oh, oh no. Not arresting, please. Well, not, then, turn uh, up the lights. Oh, oh, not understanding what I do. Are you coming this way, please? <laughs> Serve you, but we're looking for a couple of men. Now, if you'll all remain seated, the show will continue in a few minutes. You take the other aisle, Herman. Stanley and I will go down this one. Hey, what? Look, something shining under that seat. Now, wait a minute. Well, I'll be a rifle with the stump cut off. Yeah. Who was sitting here, madam? Oh, a couple of young fellows. Yeah. They shot. just came in for a few minutes, and then I heard one of them say to the other that he had a hunch he'd better leave. Can you imagine that? Slip through our hands again. But tireless investigation by the Sacramento police under the leadership of Chief McShane results in the information that the fugitives are hiding out at a rooming house in Sacramento's Tenderloin. Chief McCain leads the officers who surround the place and finally approach the door of the escape convict's room. All right, boys, on your toes. Now, these guards are plenty tough. Okay, Chief. You have to break it in, boys. Well, there's nobody here. Hey, there's a foot sticking up from under that bed. Come out of there, you. I'm coming out. Well, well, Floyd Hall, the 
bad man hiding under a bed. Where's your pal, Franco? I don't know. You don't know, huh? Now, don't lie to us. Listen, copper. Get this straight. You fools tricked me once, and Joe and I went up. But this time it won't work, so don't try it. You ain't gonna, I ain't gonna talk to you no matter what you do to me. I ain't gonna talk! While police continue their search for Tan Cole, Hall is put on trial for the murder of Lipsburg, the proprietor of the second-hand store. On his first trial, Hall is sentenced to hang, but the Supreme Court reverses the decision because the jury had not agreed and had not recommended death. In 1927, he is tried a second time, and the jury fails to agree. On the third trial, the jury again is hung. Finally, during the fourth trial, District Attorney McAllister moves a dismissal and agrees to let Hall go to Folsom to serve his original life sentence for the murder of Chief Meehan of San Bruno. Meanwhile, the search continues for Tanco, and it's in November of 1926 that two San Francisco detectives, recognizing Tanco in a pool room, follow him to his room in a nearby hotel. Who's there? Open up, Tanco. Officers of the law. Oh, yeah? Okay, come on in, but you better have your guts, Andy. Like he's done for. That's about time the people who bumped off. Heart beating? Ah, he's dead. Mm, a good thing it is, too. That's the only way to handle guys like this, Mike. Shoot first and talk about it afterwards. Police use every modern weapon in their war on crime. And police departments of the largest western cities have been first to adopt a faster, more powerful gasoline produced exclusively by Rio Grande's patented cracking process. Wherever it is sold, Rio Grande cracked gasoline powers more police cars, fire engines, ambulances, and other emergency equipment than any other brand. Why? Because it is made by the most elaborate and expensive process in the finest cracking plant in America. Give your car Rio Grande cracked gasoline and get police car performance. Sacramento police calling all cars. Attention all cars. A cancellation of broadcast 88 regarding a manhunt for escaped convicts. One escape is now in custody. The other is dead. That's all. Oh. 